All right, y'all. Welcome to Get Out to Benefits, uh, Business Benefits for State Farm. A um, lot of lot of former coworkers on on the call. I'm, I'm coming from a, from May's talk into mine. You might see some of this <laughs> the same ideas and things since we all used to work together. Um, but if you don't know me, my name is Ray Presley. I'm the Senior Engineering Manager at State Farm. Um, I'm one of many awesome people responsible for delivery experience at State Farm for for our engineering community. Uh, I personally have a specific focus on change management automation. With State Farm being an insurance company, we live in a highly regulated environment. We have extremely important uh, compliance obligations, uh, with very high standard for security, uh, auditing requirements for any change that goes out the door. And so you may be saying to yourself, that sounds like a really tough environment to be in, and it, sometimes it is. But my common answer to, to this is get up to all the things. Uh, I, love, I love being able to say that, and that's why I'm here talking to you today. Advance and so another item this week. Um, if, if you're especially if you're watching this presentation live, uh, State Farm uh, turned 100 years old yesterday, uh, which is kind of unreal if you think about it. Like how many 100 year old companies do you know of that are still as relevant and as prominent as State Farm is today? It's, at least in the U.S. And I really think about all the technology shifts State Farms had to go through from basically starting in a world with very little technology to the creation of the internet to this big cloud native world we live in today. And one thing that impresses me about State Farm is we always have been able to select the right technology for solving business problems, which is why I think we're still here today. That's a big reason why. And when I think about setting ourselves up for success for the next hundred years, I'm very excited about the technology and the patterns and the tools around GitOps and Flux and everything we're talking about today. So that's super exciting. Um, a couple other things have been happening at, at State Farm recently, if you didn't know. So last year, 2021, was our best growth uh, ever. Ever, ever, 100 years, best growth ever. So what else is happening? Uh, we're deploying to production faster and faster, and it's easier than ever. Um, we have metrics on our product teams that they're making more frequent deployments uh, with smaller and smaller change size. I started to think back, or, you know, are all these things related? And, and was there some paradigm shift that we went through to make this happen? And there kind of is. And so quick history lesson. In early 2019, Kubernetes internally was our hot new platform. And I know Kubernetes was not new in 2019, it's been around a long time, uh, but what was happening internally is we had several new production hardened clusters being stood up that were ready for product teams to use. And so at State Farm, we have a multi-tenant Kubernetes environment where each team gets one or more namespaces, your, your, your call, how many you want, and you only manage what's in your namespace. I think you'll all agree that managing Kubernetes is extremely hard. Uh, most product teams don't want to be managing their own Kubernetes clusters. So this environment gave teams a place to run their containers and that's all they had to worry about. But we started asking questions, how will we change control of this platform? How can we integrate our legacy tools we've used for years and years on other platforms into Kubernetes? Uh, thankfully, some really smart and innovative people got together, folks like me, folks like Nick Shine, folks like Pinky, folks like Russ Palmer. Um, we took a, a new approach to how we thought about change um, and we really reworked how we thought about it. And so enter Flux and GitOps. And I've really trying to, I've been trying to think back to like when I, when we first discovered this, like did I discover Flux first or did I discover GitOps first? And my best guess is it all happened at the same time. I really like to think of GitOps as the what and Flux as the how. And as you know, all these ideas and tools came from WeWorks originally anyway. And so we started in 2019 just POCing Flux V1 if it would work and, and massively it, it did and it checked a lot of boxes for what we were uh, looking for and how to manage and apply change on Kubernetes. Uh, this led to Flux V1 being rolled out, not just for every namespace at the product team level, but Flux also managed uh, aspects of our cluster, the entire cluster, to make things like namespace creation easier than, than what we were doing before, which was primarily API driven, which was brittle and, and hard to maintain. Uh, all of this led to new patterns for how we did change management. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to adhere to the idea of GitOps applied to real world tools and scenarios. Uh, it's just a quick plug for where we're at right now is we have migrated our cluster management all the way to Flux V2. Uh, our namespace consumers are still using Flux V1. We're actually using Flux V2 to still maintain and apply Flux V1, which is a little interesting, a little inception-y, uh, if you like that movie. Um, we hope to, by the end of the year, to be 100% on uh, Flux V2, hopefully sooner, uh, sooner the better. If you're watching this talk and you don't know the difference between Flux V1 and V2, just start with V2. It's way better. There's all kinds of new features, all kinds of, it's, it's more uh, like microservice oriented, um, way, way better tool. It's just what, when we started, Flux V2 was not a thing yet. Okay, so uh, talked about GitOps leading to new ways we thought about change. 
And really these points here, what I think of is the philosophy of GitOps. So number one, using Git as a single source of truth and think of how you're doing deployments as operations by pull request. And I know this is a debated topic and a lot of people say, well, isn't GitOps just infrastructure as code? It is infrastructure as code, but it's really a lot more than that. It's one step beyond that because you're using the whole ecosystem and tooling around Git, code reviews, pull requests, comments, things like that, all in live changes to your environment. And so that's a really kind of different uh, paradigm shift. So why Flux and specifically why GitOps? At the end of the day, our number one goal is to improve the developer experience. And a really great way to do that is allow engineers to stay in the tools they already use every day. GitHub, GitLab, et cetera, can be any provider of your choosing. And this is really where we flipped our thinking of change management as having to be some other system where instead we can use the baked in features of Git. So where in the past we needed an audit trail, well, let's use the commit history that could serve as the audit trail. We also need to see who approved a change before it goes out the door. The pull request can serve as that feature. And then if things go poorly, we need to do a rollback. We've got all the prior working versions of the code stored in Git. That's a natural feature of, of Git. We can go back to one of those to recover in an, in an emergency. All these features made it easier on developers, easier on State Farm leadership, and easier on auditors. So win, win, win. Uh, from a security standpoint, Flux is pull based. So when you think about a traditional CI pipeline, like I'm showing here, your CI system will eventually have to write something into the cluster. If you're moving left to right, you develop your code, you push to your repo, your CI system writes to the cluster, pushes an image up. That CI system has credentials to your cluster. And if your CI system is compromised, your cluster is most definitely is compromised too, as any penetration test analyst will tell you. With the GitOps model, all your cluster state, your credentials stay in the cluster, excuse me. So again, moving left to right on the bottom diagram, once your CI system delivers your image to, to your image repo, like Docker Hub, whatever you use, and you commit to your configuration repo, the operator in the cluster, Flux, will apply that change to the cluster. So your cluster, your credentials never leave the cluster and Flux only needs read access to your repo if you want to lock it down that, that tight. This greatly improves how we think about security than what we've traditionally done in the CI system that needed access to tons and tons of different systems. Uh, Flux takes up less resources. So Flux itself is lightweight and you can tune it based on your cluster requirements just like you do any other Kubernetes deployment. At the end of the day, if you're brand new to Flux, Flux is just more things you deploy in the cluster and they're super tiny individual components. Uh, a big thing for us is you're actually reducing your need for compute on your CI CD system. So that could be less money on your EC2 spend per month because there is no pipeline anymore in a traditional sense, like you're not having that traditional deployment pipeline. Uh, so you'll never not have a CI CD pipeline. You still need to build your code, still need to test your code, still need to scan your code, but you're reducing the need for what those systems need to do and what they need to integrate with. So also a big feature is you're no longer dependent on a CI system for your deployments. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen a, a random CI problem could just stop your, your deployment in its tracks. So say your scanning, your container scanning tool is down, my pipeline's stuck, I can't go to production. Well, because we're using Git as a source of truth, any change is just a simple pull request away. So a good example here is say you released a change yesterday, you've got some problems, you need to get a new version out there, but your CI system's down for some other completely unrelated reason. I can still go into the Git, the Git repo and revert back to the prior version to get our app back and functional. And so that, that's just a big, big win uh, from a CI CD perspective, just taking that load off that system. Okay, multi-region. Th this was kind of a wow moment for me. It, it's not specifically called out in the docs because I, I think it's obvious, but I, I didn't realize that this was happening until we actually stood up Flux. Uh, you actually get multi-region benefits by using Flux and the GitOps model. So at State Farm, we have multiple different clusters in separate regions that are primarily used for failover. So say you have a, if your east region goes down, you would then flip to your west region that, that is mirrored. Um, by having one repo to manage this infrastructure and then Flux set up in each cluster, those deployments become automatic. You, you don't even have to think about it. Again, it's easy, easy button talk here. So how many times have you seen a complicated multi-site pipeline that, that number one is you hate looking at them because they're so complicated and number two, it might work in one region, but then it might not work in another, and you might not know it didn't work until it's too late. That's no fun. And so I thought this was a great feature that I didn't expect, but really simplified our setup, uh, reduced our complexity, um, and saves on cost uh, at, the, at the end of the day. Okay, so I could talk it up all day, but I wasn't in a time crunch here. Um, tomorrow, uh, if, if, you're, if you're attending GitOps days, we have another talk. 
And so if what I, what I talked about today sounds interesting, you want to learn more, um, we're actually taking a deep dive into the GitOps and Flux, um, our setup at State Farm, like how we've automated things, how we control repos, how Flux is configured in our clusters. Um, it would be myself and uh, Perry Wu, who's an engineer on my team at State Farm, uh, tomorrow at 12.15 uh, specific time. So uh, just to summarize, uh, to, to, to wrap up the presentation. So by adopting GitOps and Flux, uh, this has enabled us to rapidly increase deployment frequency while simplifying the deployment process. Uh, involved our develop, improved our uh, developer experience by allowing our engineers to stay and work in the tools they already work in every day. Um, we typically had one tool to do X, another tool to do Y, another tool to do Z, and now everything's in Git, which our developers love. A combination of all of the above is allowing us to deliver our products faster and faster to customers. At the end of the day, that's really all we really care about, and that's why our growth is, I think, what it is, is we're getting stuff out the door quicker and quicker with more confidence uh, because of how simple, simple Flux is and how simple our deployment processes are. Flux enables us to have fully secure clusters with no human right capabilities allowed in production. From a security standpoint, that's extremely important because our production clusters are locked down where no one has access to do anything. Um, we've never wanted to give that CI system access. People can compromise that even to just hack something real quick. And so by using Flux, we've completely just removed that from the, the environment. So our production clusters, while, while we do have like a break glass kind of role that people can get into if they need to in an emergency, um, for the most part, there is no human write access. It's all controlled via Flux, and every, if you want to run something in production, it has to go in Git first, and it has to be approved before it goes into Git. Um, Multi-region, multi-data center deployments are fully automated with a single change. Um, again, just a, just a huge win because one commit can go to multiple sites, no, nothing's ever out of sync, um, and it just simplifies that whole CI-CD flow uh, going to production. Uh, we're saving time and money on less CI/CD compute requirements and complexity. Um, sometimes CI/CD systems are great, and like we, you're still going to need them for other 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 functions and features of getting your app to production. Um, but for the most part, like the, just removing that step has reduced complexity on making our developer lives easier, and then saving time on those CI/CD systems to not be maybe as heavy or used as frequently as they would be on another system. And with that, thank you. That was it. I kind of I kind of blew through that, but um, but uh, Pinky, what do you think? Hopefully, pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Um, there aren't any questions in the chat, but I had a question. Sure. Um, I mean, obviously, your experience with GitOps has come a long way since then. But seeing as like, so I think how this started was you went to KubeCon, correct, and then heard about GitOps. So, what was your first impression like? Like, what did you actually hear about? At the conference, I wasn't in that initial pitch that you had with like May and Russ way back when in Dallas. <laughs> um, I'd say like I mean we we were so stuck on how would we take this monolith of how we used to do things and apply it to Kubernetes, which Kubernetes felt so new at the time, and it was such like an interesting world to be in that taking something that like really square peg round hole, it was like I, I don't even know how that's going to work. And when we saw this idea for GitOps, it, it just felt natural, I think. I think it felt like that next evolution of here's how CICD and I, well, not CICD, but I guess just how change is going to work in the future. Yeah. Um, that's what really excited me about it. And then the, the idea of using Git for all those requirements, that, that just felt right. Like even when we did that initial pitch meeting to our you know, leadership team at State Farm, I, I was not a leader at the time. I, I was a, a, just right. a developer. Um, I was just so excited about just staying in GitLab. That, that was the main thing. I didn't know the other tool. Like, I, you know, it, it just felt oddly strange to use it. And so the fact that we could just stay working in Git, like that, that was very exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember it. Because I think we were on the same team then. Mm -hmm. yep. Way back yep. then, yeah. Yep. So. We've come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't see any questions. But if you would, just like stick around in, in the Slack Absolutely. and answer some if they do come up. I really Absolutely. appreciate you. Looking forward to hearing your talk tomorrow as well. All right. Thank you so Thank much, you. Race. Thanks a bunch.